My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. You're welcome to episode number 85 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall continue questions and answers on the DC circuits and maybe electric cells. Let's see what this episode has in stock for us. And remember, we are making use of the Flash Learners application. Install one for yourself and as well access thousands and thousands of questions offline. No internet connection required. In homes, electrical appliances and lamps are connected in parallel because now I mentioned that when it comes to lamps, which is bulbs or electrical devices, you can connect in parallel or series. Even resistors, you can connect in parallel or series. In your events, if you are doing marriage, or your younger brother or elder brother or sister is getting married, you notice they will set canopies. Many canopies like that. Now there will be small generator here or generator or nepa or socket. So what they do is each of the canopy they will put one bulb here, put one bulb here, put one bulb here, put one bulb here, in as many as possible. Now they will connect this bulb to this, connect this to this, connect this to this, and everything is connected to the generator or the socket or whatever, like this, like this, and all the bulbs they will turn on. Now, this is actually a very easy connection. It saves you wire because it is something you will disconnect in a few hours time. So you need not do a lot of connection or technical connection. And since it's not a permanent something, you don't want to buy so many switches and say, okay, let me off this, on this, no. On everything, off everything once. This is a series connection of lamps. This is actually very beautiful and it meets the need, the use. But the problem now is, if anything happens to one of the wire here, you cross this wire, everything goes off. If anything happens to this connection, the rest will not turn off. And there is no way you can turn on only one. One switch will control everything. This is not so for your homes. In your homes, one switch does not control, uh, control everything. In fact, this is a summary of how your house is being wired. In every home, you see your distribution board one big box like that that you can open and you see different uh, switches and different ratings so let's say you have here you have here you have here you have here and many like that so all these circuit breakers they can if the current is too much they will break some can be 13 amps going to your wall socket or tv or freezer some can be 15 amps going to your electric cookers or your ac unit now if you have one room here another room here Another room here, another room here. From here, you can say, okay, this 13, this place now, let me connect here to only all the bulbs in one room. So only one breaker or one, one this thing can control all the bulbs in a particular room. You say, okay, this one, let this one go to all this wall, uh, wall socket. And this 15 amp, let only this one run to where there will be AC in the room, AC connection. You now say, okay, this particular one, let it go to the next room. This particular place, let it go to the next room. Like this, like that. So for each of the rooms or each of the lighting to have switch or a, 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 um, a space for them in the distribution board. So when you come, you want to off only a particular room. You know the connection going to that room, you off it. And if there is a fault in one room, that particular switch or uh, circuit breaker will off. And there will not be power or light in that room to save that fault. So nothing will happen to every other room. Apart from the breakers or distribution board or fuse for protection, so that if the current flowing into your house is more than what is required or the rating of the fuse, the fuse will blow up to protect your room. Each of the bulbs in your room, they have their own connection and switch so that you can turn on the bulb in your toilet and the one in the room be off or the one in the room will be off you turn off the one in your toilet to save power because the more you own everything in your house the more power 
will be consumed. And electrical power is acting to save us a lot of cost from spending and spending and spending. So this connection where each part is connected in a way it has a switch or each connection has its own part in the distribution board, this is referred to as parallel connection. So if anything happens to one bulb in your room or a connection to one light in your room, it will not affect the others. So if this connection going to one room or the lighting unit is caught on the way, only the light will have issue, socket will be working. That's why sometimes in your rooms, you can see that your socket will be working but light will not on. Or light will be on, socket will not work. This is because this is a switch or a fuse in your distribution board has stripped to save for. You can just open it, you see the one that is off, you on it back. So it's as simple as that. So the reason or we connect in parallel is so that what happens to one will not happen to the other. And the second reason is that for parallel connection, the same voltage will flow. Different current will flow to different aspects, but different voltage will flow. Like for your AC socket, 15 amp will flow. For your uh, wall socket, normal for TV and fridge, 13 amp will flow there. So different current are flowing to the various units of your house, but the voltage is the same. To convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter, a dash, if you want to convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter, you can do this by connecting a high resistance. And this high resistance is called multiplier in series. So connect a multiplier in series with the voltmeter. You are definitely with the galvanometer. You are definitely going to get a voltmeter. So to convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter, a high resistance called multiplier is connected to it in series. Option B is the correct option. And let's see this question. An ammeter of resistance is you see that an ammeter of resistance 5 ohms has a full speed deflection when a current of 50 milliampere flows through it. So this is the full scale deflection current, 50 milliampere. And this is the same thing as 50 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Milli is divided by 1000 or times 10 to the power of minus 3 times all this marker get used every time times the shunt resistance they say 5 ohms 2 times 5 this is equals the current the value of the resistor required to adapt it to measure a current of 5 amp so the current we are measuring is 5 amp and the resistance is question so from here you solved resistance will be 50 times 10 to the power of minus 3 times 5 over 5 5 divided by 5 is 1 50 times 10 to the power of minus 3 is the same thing as 50 divided by 1000 and that will give you 0 0.05 ohms if I am actually correct and the next question says 6 identical cells each of EMF 2 volts are connected in series the effective EMF of the cells are if you are arranging cells for cells in series it's the same way you calculate resistance in series. We are told that we have six identical cells. Each of them has EMF of two volts. So the effective EMF or the total EMF, since they are connected in series, is you add all the six of them. So the first one is two, plus the second one is two, plus the third one is two, plus the fourth one is two, plus the fifth one is two, plus the sixth one is two. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That will give you 12 volts. So for arrangement of cells in series, just add everything. And for arrangement of cells in parallel, solve it the way you solve for resistors in parallel. Now let's see this question. It is looking interesting. To convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter a high resistance referred to as multiplier m is connected to it in series on the other hand to convert a galvanometer to ammeter a low resistance called shunt is connected to it in parallel so if you want to connect a uh, convert a galvanometer to voltmeter this is the formula the multiplier or the resistance you need to convert it, it equals V 
over the galvanometer current minus the galvanometer uh, resistance. So this is the voltage I've given. Ig is the current of the galvanometer. Rog is the galvanometer resistance. On the other hand, if you are converting to ammeter, the shunt resistance you need, or the shunt, is the galvanometer current times the galvanometer resistance all over the current given minus the galvanometer current. This example will do justice to it. A galvanometer of resistance 12 ohms, which means the resistance of the galvanometer is 12 ohms, gives a full scale deflection when a current of 150 milliamperes flows through it. So the current flowing through the galvanometer is 150 milliampere. And we convert to ampere by dividing by 1000. So this will give you um, 0 0.15 amp. This is the value of current flowing through the galvanometer. It further says that how will you convert it to an ammeter capable of measuring 5 amp? So how will you convert it to an ammeter capable of measuring 5 amp? So this current you are seeing is the current that the ammeter is able to measure. And this your arrow is usually the shunt, the resistance you need. Because you see the uh, options are in ohms. The resistance you need to convert this ammeter to to convert this galvanometer to ammeter. With all of this, food is ready. So the shunt or the shunt resistance is galvanometer current. Here is it, 0 0.15 amp, 0.15 times the galvanometer resistance, 12 ohms, 12 ohms all over the current that we need is 5 ampere. An ammeter capable of measuring a 5 amp current. So 5 minus the galvanometer current again. That's 0 0.15. 0 0.15. That is it. If you solve that, you should get 0 0.37 ohms. That is that simple. So just know this formula. To convert galvanometer to ammeter, arrow or the resistance needed or the shunt is Ig Rog over I minus Ig. To voltmeter, multiplier or Rom is V over Ig minus Rog. And if you are given something like this, this is a Winston bridge. For Winston bridge, if you are looking for unknown resistance, let's say you are given three known and you are looking for unknown, the unknown is simply gotten by you divide this by this. Any value that is here, divide by this. For here, this is 20 over 24. You say it's equals 15 over W. So from here, you get your W. That is how to solve or uh, find resistance in Winston Bridge. If here were to be, let's say, S and here is 5, to get the value of S uh, resistance or S ohm, you simply say S over 24 is equals 15 over 5. You get your S. That is how to find unknown resistance. And the next question says, a short chain is sometimes attached to the back of a petrol tanker. This is to conduct excess charges to the earth. A lamp is connected across a battery. A piece of low conductivity wire is now connected in series with it. The lamp will dash. When you connect a lamp across a battery, and now you add a low conductivity wire in series with the lamp. So the low conductivity wire has a high resistance. For low conductivity, resistance is high. So since this is connected in series with the lamp, you notice that the same current will flow through it. But because there is a high resistance, current will drop on the way because resistance is inversely proportional to current. So current through the circuit is reduced since resistance has increased. What will happen? It will grow a dimmer. If there is low current flowing, the bulb will grow dimmer. So since the high uh, resistance wire is being added, current will definitely reduce. That is it. And this says, calculate the current in the 3 ohms resistors shown in the diagram below. If you are smart, 
or if you'll be following us, you will see that we have two resistors there. And these resistors are connected in parallel. And you see a current 13 amp is meant to flow through these resistors that is connected in parallel. So what do you think is going to happen? This is what will happen. The same voltage will flow, but this different current will flow. In parallel, across resistors, current flowing will be different. The first thing you do is you look for the equivalent resistance. Equivalent resistance. So we have three resistors in, primary, uh, in parallel. So what is the equivalent resistance? If you solve very well, 1 over 2 ohms, 1 over equivalent is equals 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms. The value of the equivalent resistance you should get is 12 over 13 ohms so resistance is 12 over 13 ohms now if i am wrong you can solve your own to be correct i don't like it when you say the answer you got is wrong or is correct because i'm not actually teaching to show you the answers or whatever i'm teaching you to know it to know how to solve so if i teach you the right formula the right way and in the process of solving i make mistake in calculation you should be able to solve on your own just so long you understand it now we've gotten the value of the resist equivalent resistance and we've gotten the value of the current. So we know that voltage is I R. Current is voltage over resistance. How do we get the voltage? We know the current. The resistance is 12 over 13 times the current flowing is given to be 13 amp times 13. From here, voltage is definitely 12 volts. So if the voltage is 12 volts and the current, if voltage is 12 volts, current is voltage over resistance. So the current that we flow in the 3 ohms resistor will be the voltage 12, because the same voltage will flow across them. For parallel, the same voltage flows, different currents. So the voltage is 12 over the resistance is 3. So this is really the value of the current that we flow through that 3 ohms resistor, 4 amp. If you are solving for the current that we flow through the 2 ohms resistor, it will simply be 12 over 2. The current that we flow through the 4 ohms resistor will be 12 over 4. They are as simple as A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that will be it for this episode. See you in the next episode.